happy 4th of July weekend, everybody, and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. This holiday generally marks the beginning of the mangrove snapper spawn down here across the Florida Keys. Um, it's almost like a benchmark, and even though there's a lot of nice mangroves that have already been caught, really, like I said, that July 4th weekend really kicks this fishery off into high gear. But there's a lot to catch in these big mangs, these big mangroves, you know, it's not as easy as you may think. Um, but, you know, there are some approaches that are straightforward and very effective, and I want to share one of them with you as well. Um, look, here's the key. You got to get an early start. That's the bottom line, okay? I mean, if you're leaving a dock at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, don't expect to catch any of these big mangroves. You know, you might get lucky, stumble across one here or there, uh, but for the most part, you're just not going to catch them. You've got to be out there early. I like to fish for these mangroves from 6 to 9 a.m. It's a three-hour window, really, really early at dawn, up until around 9 a.m., and then we switch gears. We either head home or head offshore or go yellowtail fishing or something else. Um, so the key, like I said, is proper preparation and getting out there early, for starters. Where? Well, look, anywhere along the entire Island Keys chain. And, you know, if you're visiting the Florida Keys over the July 4th weekend, or if you live down here somewhere, or if you visit any other time of the year, whatever the case. If you wanna really look for these big mangs, these big mangroves on the ocean side, cause that's what we're talking about today. The bay side is a completely different fishery. We're talking about the ocean side. The patch reefs, 32 to 38 feet of water seems to be key. You can fish deeper. You're gonna catch them deeper as well around drop offs and rocky ledges and some of the structures that are out there but there's a lot of nice fish in that shallower water in that you know mid 30s range so don't think that you have to be really really far out there or really deep because you don't anywhere paralleling the entire island chain key west to key largo you should find mangroves get there early get set up get anchored up current of the structure that you want to fish Okay, pay attention to what's happening around you. What's the wind doing? What's the current doing? How am I gonna lay on my anchor? You know, use your electronics if you need to, uh, to help you get dialed in with your track. If you've got a Furuno TZ Touch, use that Fish It Drift It feature to get that anchor in the right position. I don't care what you do, but the bottom line is you've gotta be in the right position. If you're behind the structure, and your chum is just flowing way back there and all of the coral and the exposed rubble and rock is up here, your baits are gonna be back here. You're missing the boat, my friend. You need to be positioned up there so everything drifts over the area that you wanna fish. Moving water is key. You've gotta have some moving water, okay? No current, no wind, just sitting still. Man, that's like the kiss of death, it really is. So. I don't know, you know, maybe stick it out for a little while if something doesn't change and, you know, the current doesn't pick up, the tide sometimes affects, of course, that movement of water. Whatever it may be, if something doesn't change, you should pick up and move because you need moving water to be effective. Chum, of course, you've got a chum, okay? Bottom line, okay, you're not gonna get them fired up if you don't chum. Take a block or two, put it in, you know, Dubro chum bag or whatever it is you're gonna put. Uh, over the side and let that chum flow. Do that immediately. Even before I set my anchor, I know where, you know the approximate area I'm gonna fish. I put the chum in the chum bag. I'll do a couple of circles, a couple of figure eights over the area that I'm gonna fish. Just get that scent in the water. Start to get them fired up. This way when we get tight on that anchor and we're in the right position, we're just a little bit ahead of the game. And when you only have a small window to catch these fish, Every minute is gonna matter, that's for sure. Once we're set up and that chum is flowing, now it's time to start deploying baits. One at a time, don't go crazy and start fishing six lines, okay? You're gonna spook them, you know, you gotta be stealthy about this, you gotta be smart about this if you wanna fool these big mangroves. Go one at a time, okay? Couple different outfits I fish, seven foot chaos rod rated for 12 to 20 pound line, very light, very comfortable. 
match to a uh, Shimano Tori M16. It's a little workhorse. It's a little star drag reel. Nothing fancy. That's it. It's just a little workhorse. Okay, It's a great little conventional reel for so many different fisheries and certainly for this fishery. Loaded with 20 pound mono, 20 pound diamond line right there. Okay, Not the high vis. Stay away from high vis. And I've got about 15 feet of the 20 pound clear presentation fluorocarbon. So very, very stealthy. And I've got the rig finished off with just literally nothing more than a half ounce jig head. That's it right there. Just a little half ounce jig head. Nothing more. Keep it simple. Okay, my connection between my leader and my running line is a blood knot that I can rely on. I know it's bulletproof. My connection to the lure is an improved clinch knot, simple. There's no failure points. I've got fresh leader, fresh line, my drag set perfectly. This is just the ideal outfit for targeting these big mangrove snappers. It's a lot of fun, but I've got enough backbone in the event that I hook a bigger fish. And it's the same on the spinning side. Six and a half foot spinning outfit, okay? On this particular reel, We've switched it up. It's a twin power 4,000, actually a 5,000, I'm sorry, loaded with 20 pound braid. So really, really thin, that same 20 pound fluorocarbon and that same jig head, the half ounce jig head. But I'm just showing you that there's variations. We've got mono to fluorocarbon on a conventional. We've got braid to fluorocarbon on a spinner. Both of them are gonna work. It's whatever you have, they're gonna work. They're light, they're comfortable, they're sensitive, but you always have that shot at a big mutton snapper, a grouper, a yellow jack, all sorts of stuff are gonna eat those baits when you're mangrove fishing. So it's always a good idea to fish an outfit that can handle those larger fish as well. Very, very important. Feel your leader after every fish. Feel that leader, it's gonna be frayed, it's gonna be nicked, it's gonna be beat up. Cut a piece off, that's why I fish 15, I mean 15 feet. Cut six inches off, cut a foot off, do whatever you need to do and retie. Don't let tackle failure enter the equation. As far as baits, I've got two options when I'm targeting these big mangrove snappers. I head out there with a live well filled with small live pinfish. That's it, that's step number one, small live pinfish. I take a live pinfish and pal it on the jig head, okay? Drop it to the bottom and let it sit on the bottom. Don't feed it out slowly. He's not going to eat it on the way down. It doesn't look right. Let it hit the bottom, lock it up, and just literally put those fingers on that line, hold that rod, and just pay close attention because he's going to whack it. Okay, and that's all that you need is that jig head right there. It's just sitting on the bottom. You get that bite, he clobbers it, and drive that hook home, and you're in the game. Okay, it's really that simple. Start with one person fishing, go to a second person fishing again with the pins. I always carry a ballyhoop, okay? I mean, this is a vital tool because the ballyhoo are gonna be swimming in the chum slick. Rather than taking out a big cumbersome heavy net and throwing it and spooking everything in sight, I can deploy a ballyhoop really stealthily and grab some fresh ballyhoo because nine out of 10 times the ballyhoo are in the slick and there are far, few baits that are better, more effective for big mangrove snappers than a live ballyhoo or even a ballyhoo chunk. The key is fresh, fresh. To fool these big fish, that bait's gotta be alive or it's gotta be fresh. That's the bottom line. And those are my two options, the pinfish, the small pinfish, live, or a ballyhoo. Okay, if it's a small ballyhoo, I'll fish them live. Absolutely, the entire thing, I bust his beak off on the same jig head, right to the bottom. Okay, and they'll suck them up. If it's a really big ballyhoo, I'll cut them in half and fish the two pieces, you know, uh, the two parts of the plug. And that's it, that's mangrove fishing, okay, to catch these big mangroves. It's taking that approach of being really stealthy, really sneaky, don't overdo it with too many people fishing one or two. That's it, two at the most. If there's multiple people on the boat, alternate, okay? Don't spook them, be careful. You only have that small window. And like I said, the live pinfish, the ballyhoo that we caught with the ballyhoop, essential tool, 
really, really is. And I, it's what it all boils down to, okay? There's a lot of different ways to mangrove fish, but that's how I do it, and that's how I'm really effective.